who are speaking to the two applications this evening. Um, and again, some general housekeeping, uh, restrictions on social distancing lifted. We're not asking you to wear masks once seated, um, but again, if you prefer to wear a mask or wish to move around the, the building particularly, there are some masks available if you haven't brought one. And again, if you're here for one particular agenda, agenda item, and that this will become apparent in a moment when I run through with me, you're very welcome to go um, between the two applications this evening. There will be a brief break. So if we move to the agenda proper then, please. Um, oh, and I'm sorry, I haven't said, I hope I've followed my own advice. Would you please speak loudly and clearly, uh, whether members or um, in, in a member of the deputation? I gather this little gizmo here is being temperamental, so it's even more important um, that um, you, you do speak up. It's my usual effect on any sort of technology. I can um, generally disable it at a distance of two or three feet. Um, right. Um, do I have any apologies, please? Chair, apologies have been received from councillors Ball, Cross and McCartney. Thank you very much indeed. And the second item on the agenda, could I confirm the minutes of the meeting on the 21st of September? Thank you, Councillor Oxley. Seconded, Councillor Payne. All those in favour, please. And that is unanimous, I think. Thank you. Um, declarations of interest. Um, I have one to make myself in a moment, but Councillor Andrew Brown. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, the uh, the uh, the and so I'll take no part in the, um, in the proceedings or, or neither on the vote. Thank you very much. Councillor Oxley? Uh, I know the landowner, but I will take part in proceedings uh, as it's not a person more prejudicial to just say hello in the street. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Looking anymore. Um, um, from my part, um, I too know the landowner, but again, I don't have any pecuniary interest. So, simply for a matter of probity, that is on the first up in, um, or Preston application. Um, on the Braunston one, um, I am declaring an interest. I am the um, immediate agricultural neighbour. I have put an objection in on behalf of myself and my family, which is in the, in the papers. Um, and I will hand over to Councillor Beggy as the Vice Chairman. And again, to make it absolutely clear, I have taken no part whatsoever in either of the uh, preparation of the report and I did not attend the normal briefing um, for this. So I, I shall leave the meeting and hand over to Council Beggy at the conclusion of the first, first item. Um, so if we move to item four, petitions, deputations, Again, as is our wont, um, those will be taken in sequence um, of, for each application um, and they will come once the officer has made the initial uh, report. Again, um, the um, people speaking will have three minutes to make their point and then there will be three minutes uh, for members um, to ask any, any questions. Um, <coughs> What I would just like to say, and in particularly looking to members of the public um, and members of the public who may be listening um, on Zoom, um, that um, the process this evening, um, which I hope will be reasonably clear, um, but would like to clarify the roles that we occupy. The officers um, have a professional role in respect to policies, they interpret them on the written policies and planning law. Elected members have a different role. Um, they, we represent local residents and we also make sure that their views and concerns are represented. We also have to consider the strategic role that any decision we come to plays in, in the, whole, um, the whole county. And where you have, as possibly you have this evening, strong local feelings um, on the um, application, um, the um, officers will have taken account of that. They will have noted that, but they may have come to weigh the 
concerns less heavily than perhaps elected members will. What I want to make quite clear is whatever decision we come to on these two applications this evening, should members decide, and I have no idea how this will pan out, should members decide to go against the officer's recommendation in each case for approval, that is in no way criticism of the officers. They have one role to perform, we have another. And so make that absolutely clear because I know sometimes in public, the, the council is lumped as a, a single entity. No, it isn't. We have different roles to, we hope, come to the right conclusion. So having said that, if we can then move to item five, the actual planning applications. And the first one, um, I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Hodgett if he will um, present the report and I will then call on the people who asked to speak. Mr. Hodgett. Thank you, Chairman. This application is for the It's just a close view um, in the site. You can see um, from an existing access point into the school, uh, this point here. Um, originally, the applicant wanted to form an access point with no authority and didn't allow separate access into that point in the end of the seven, six people uh, requested to additional so this the site itself slopes from um, this part here where it does slope fairly steeply to the north down to a waterfall and um, the boundary um, the hedge along this boundary which you see on top there and then there's a, a much higher hedge which comes up so this is the, the latest proposed block plan. So you'll see that the access comes in on a new arm um, from the main town. It's proposed to provide pedestrian uh, access around the island with new um, paving so that there is accessibility from the site going to the town. There is a little footpath. That runs both across this site, as shown by the purple line, which goes across the spire by the existing access, and that does continue straight across the existing seven and take you all the way through the, the access road that runs into the um, Dr. Gates Mountain Survey. So, the proposal is for um, an installation which will have the conventional shop in this location here. It's back to the access uh, not been drive through on this location here, which again has its main access point facing into the car park, but as you can see, this tree belt here would screen that um, access point. So the road to come in and look down. Initially, these um, the four course here would be for petrol. Uh, the road plan which shows how that is in future to provide. Several additional electric charging points there. Uh, there's the electric charging points along the core of the site here. This will increase our parking space here initially. And there's also an area just here which is reserved for future hydrogen storage. Members may be aware that hydrogen is hydrogen power vehicle, which is a really easy source of energy. So, some of storage for the term hydrogen power vehicles will be coming into the architecture in the future. So, as I said earlier, the site does slope down towards the water course. Um, it's proposed to carry out some new tree planting along here. There will be a sandal wall along the line of the black marker, which will be a landscape plan along this kind of road. I'm certain to walk across the site. 
bring them down to a series of weekends. You know, um, it's not going to come through normally to the court for the next day. So we can have a good one to all of this. I'm not sure if you can do that. I'm not sure if you can do that. This is this is this one. I'm going to show you the unit that you've been uh, visually able to see. This one I've done is one of the current versions. Um, it's more visible to most of you on on this slide. So it's um, it's it's not going to be very very superior. This is an example of the business process that we've got with them. So it's not necessarily most of the procedures that we've got from from that. It's the underpinnings which we're really going to be talking about. So it's an investigation of whether on board the facilities is being um, less of a miniature and currently there's a smidge of this in the latest facility that follows the sea in the tip of the earth 24 hours, which doesn't get this anywhere else in the United States and Greece for the moment. And it does have this huge speech in which we're just getting to the right about rebuilding the whole future electric and development of sustainable vehicles. So this is the elevation of the, the coffee shop. This is top most the rear elevation that would be facing the equal to seven, but that would be largely the upper end of the tree, not the top of the elevation you have seen. There's a car park way out there that turned this into this small domestic that it's um, this huge sort of uh, city facility in the Pacific Horizon. It's a mixture of uh, timber, um, different types of course, we've had in different pieces. Uh, This is the actual filling station shop itself. So, if you go into the site, um, you will see this elevation. And whilst it's part of the land that faces the entrance, it's all the landscape in the district. And it does comprise um, limestone walling on that side to get back to the local context. On the other side, it's much like um, many of the temples of the building. These are the sections through the side. So the top one is the view from the side of the input seven, but here you can start the edging of the trees and the landscape and remove certain things to be um, what the effect is. Both, both of the buildings will be set down to the road up to the input seven. As you can see from this east elevation, you've got the input seven here on the right hand side, and you can see the buildings are actually set there from the See that the land continues to come up from the valley to the south. And this is the view from the north, which you can really see apart from traffic down the east as you go through it. There is a um, CGI image of that, which we'll come to in a moment. And this is again the section through the sides from approaching uh, the north, which again the equal to seven is here. And you can see the buildings at the front. These are views at the moment. This is um, looking, this is the application site on the foreground looking up, and then you can see the A63 on the plate and some of the approach that we're in this direction. Uh, and that's more from down onto the side looking back towards the A47 behind the head. The building there goes down to this one. This is the view from as you put a nice low out of it. The only sort of site would be um, the right, um, access from that point. Um, this is approaching on <coughs> This is a CGI image of coming down um, the A6 and the Level 3 prime. From there, you can see the sign that is sort of happening. So this gives you an impression of, of how the site is set. Um, this is taken from the verge of the site of race lab compared to the lab that we set out of the car, which you can see there. But nevertheless, it, it, this, this is probably going to be the most prominent view that you'll get to the site, both from here and as you get down there. Um, but there is a condition recommended to call for a more detailed landscaping scheme, um, so that we can ensure the best possible 
chances is given to certain Perhaps the existing access gates would be the style of the footpath that goes across the site, so that would be closed off and um, put that up to the main and the past building would be the Stanford. And that's looking from the gate into the access across towards the fences that go through behind those trees in the distance. And again, straight down, um, six will go through again in the distance on the left, there you can see it's nice. From the east, on the seven, so this is the existing access into the site. You can see we've got three people here on the existing edge of the front. This is the last specification of the front front. This edge will be, as you should see, the conditions are required to be kept. This is a, another CG I'm right from. Um, similar direction, so that this is traveling towards um, in that direction. Uh, you can see that the, the, the tree screen there has been grayed out, so that you can get an impression of roughly building behind the that screen. Or that that's that's where the access, the, sorry, the old access would be placed on. And you just get a sense of the, the building slightly lower level and more some fun. Um, the new access would go in across approximately this point here. So that's the that face the road up to the to seven up in the distance to the beautiful. And this is usually coming from the rest of the direction. This is the ground here. So, <clears throat> in terms of the main issues, they are set out in the report. Um, this application is subject to a uh, Pre-application submission, and we get to look at the state of the highway access. We did say to them that it wasn't necessarily straightforward. They said, yes, this is bound to be acceptable, but put together the submission that demonstrates that it would be a lot of tears to be a very high quality scheme that would provide those answers because. One being built to seven and then stop that um, facility for the future improvements. In terms of what's the SP7, which just permit both side services, um, scheme does appear to fulfill the criteria in the SP7, um, but they are sort of generic. But it does specifically say that both side services will be acceptable subject to. So I've already explained the highway authority wanted the access to come off the roundabout. Um, that is now as the application is submitted with that access, and the highway authority has made objections to the scheme subject to fairly realistic conditions that have been set out in the application. In terms of the visual impact, um, showing from the photographs and the plans that the buildings are slightly below the level of the A47. With some major tree screening to be retained and possibly hopefully enhanced and maintained to a middle distance, um, there will be limited impact on the scheme. There's, there's no policies anywhere that say that the scheme should be invisible, so it has to be accepted that if that development goes ahead, it will be invisible. Um, it's not such that it would have a harmful effect that it would be put up. Um, your ecologists um, just want to clarification that the distance is from boundary edges to the third. Investigatory work has been out on site by Corpus to establish what the boundary is going to be in the western side. Some original borrowers are just a bit again similar to the Western Standard, so it's not. What sort of quality or connected with any particular heritage assets or such as it would be seen as such with archaeology advisors to identify the working and the conditions in this case. So, um, overall, limited visual impact. Um, the scheme complies with the policies that relate to this type of development, also supports, as the report sets out in the background at the beginning, the government's. Um, Intention to provide more electric charging for the sustainable vehicles in the future. And 
that there is no separation of the politics in the world. I and so on that basis, Chairman, the application is recommended. Thank you very much, Mr. Hardit. Um, we have um, Caroline Cartwright from the CPRE to speak first. Thank you. You have your three minutes. Um, whichever you prefer, whichever you're, you're more comfortable with. The application is about significant implications for the sustainability and prosperity of Ireland. The site lies in northern boundary of Townsend, that earlier planning decision intended to protect the approach to the town boundary and the view of the human gates commercial area, significantly watering the It's a fact that birds meeting the application could have applied to locate the Indian industrial zone on the outside of the gate of the stone, or already recognized as part of the town, and still achieve all the commercial objectives the initial achieved. They chose not to um, instead seek to build on the value of the Specifically, CPRE worked on the objective of the application of the Fixed the local land policy that was intended to protect the land of the town. This further brought the device of its application to not be found. It was incorrect given its conflict in retail number, its convenience store, and its close proximity to the town of the commercial district. You can go to sign that site for the electric charging stores are available. About getting to the end of your three minutes. Is that is that there? Very well timed. Thank you, Mrs. Cartwright. Members, and now if you'd stay for a minute, please. Sorry, if you could stay to take any questions. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Members, Councillor Oxley. Just to clarify, um, you state that there are electric charging points in Ireland. How many? Three. I know 
for two. Any other members? Any questions? Thank you. And again, if, thank you very much, Mrs. Cartwright. Um, and again, if I could just remind people to speak as loudly and clearly as they can, please, because um, the technology is um, not as sensitive as it might be, I think. Um, uh, right. Uh, I'm not sure if Louisa Finch is here from the Aston meeting. Uh, no, so I don't think no, no, I don't think we've got anybody from the parish meeting. So in that case, I'll ask Mr. Bassett on behalf of the applicant. Thank you. Again, Mr. Bassett, you've got your three minutes and three minutes of questions. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Mark Massett, the Prince of Wales Board, and I work on the African Free Child Trust Services Committee. The application before you today is about planning for change. The scheme proposes high quality 24 hour roads for service with a significant emphasis on electrical vehicle charging, and the really development of the adaptable and future of the scheme which they support. In November 2020, the government met to debate the ban on saving petrol and diesel cars. It's essential to build a policy on tackling climate change and moving to zero emission vehicles, and we will be building out of today. However, the industry challenge facilitates this vision. How does the application contribute to meeting this challenge? It poses six EV charging points consisting of two super fast chargers at 150 and four battery chargers at 50 volts. This alone is significant provision, but more importantly, is heavily invested in to secure a high voltage supply to the site, which will enable the site to adapt and provide additional capacity to fill the amount of EV charging for this time. The site will push through the installation of their own ground cuts to allow for efficient increase in capacity in the area of the site. The site is located in a strategic region near the airport and the next domestic region, and there is an absence of EV charging facilities on this route. Further, the city will have a 24 hour service region. Which is again absent on the scheme of power. Further aspects of the scheme's commitment to future green fields and safeguarding the land of the climate provision. Land conditions for fields at the time safeguarding for the purposes of meaningful 10 years. Our clients have worked collaboratively with local highway authority to ensure that suitable access to ingress to and from the site, including through the submission of efficient safety measures, which is not the scheme. Sites that are chosen outside the scheme. Thank you very much. Again, yeah. members, Councillor Oxley. Uh, I have two questions. Um, so, how do you propose increasing um, the amount of electricity available on site within, say, uh, 24 hours? Is Uh, 
Um, so, um, can touch briefly on the decision to put it here rather than up in the gate. So, could you clarify why you chose not to put it up there at the gate? Yeah, thank you. Um, so, the reason why we chose not to put it up there at the gate is firstly uh, to get access into the gate. Um, you heard in the presentation from the officers that. Direct access in terms of right turning off A47 wasn't uh, uh, feasible. So, to get to the site, you have to come off the roundabout, turn back, uh, and, and into the Indian gate in front of the site. And to the uh, site that is, is allocated in the neighborhood plan from the roundabout to that site, some like 500 meters. Uh, and commercially, that's never going to be acceptable for uh, 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 a petrol station. Or the station operator is not going to get the volume of coming into that site. So that's one principle. Uh, the, the second reason is that there are a number of different land ownerships uh, from the, the access point into the to main site. So there's a number of different land ownerships to, to, to deal with. So um, there's no evidence that that's, that's available. Um, I have one question for you, Mr. Bassett. Um, on um, paragraph 18 of the um, proposed for uh, the key reasons why this site is and the second of those bullet points is adjacent to a main settlement and I wondered if you could explain how this is a, a key um, reason when the rest of the report rather says that there will be no impact on Uppingham at all. Yeah I mean the, the principal purpose of the development is that it's on a strategic Submitted a, a retail note of the application which looked at the, the impacts on uh, on, on Buckingham Town Centre and they considered to be very small and negligible. Um, the floor space associated with the, with the um, uh, shop or the petrol station is very small and uh, there's tests in the impact of the adverse really that would go on to what site is or whether it's not uh, the part of the Thank you. Um, right, I think that is the time up. Thank you very much for your uh, contribution, Mr. Bassett, and we'll now move into the debate. Um, as I am the, the ward member, I, I think, in fact, Councillor Oxley has probably got uh, more to say. What I'm going to do is just ask um, our highways officer um, to explain the situation, because I know the concerns over um, safety on that roundabout have been voiced considerably locally and I know we're Aston here in person tonight they would be expressing similar concerns I'm going to wait to hear what other people have to say and then I will come in with a contribution at the end of the debate but I would just like to ask the um the highways officer um if she would just explain what the situation is on safety thank you uh, basically, there's some main considerations uh, when looking at a development like this and looking at new accesses. Um, so, uh, obviously, a transport assessment is carried out to assess uh, the impact, impact of the trips. Um, as has already been noted, uh, the, the, the primary um, people that are targeted on this type of development is going to be um, drive through trips along the A47. So uh, a full capacity uh, assessment has been done and um, found that there's, you know, there's capacity within that junction. Um, I think the figures uh, that was agreed, uh, uh, 42 two-way trips in the morning peak and 44 two-way trips in the evening peak. Um, and those figures are based on industry uh, industry standard figures um, from a database called Tricks. Um, so they've been verified. So capacity is one issue, um, which we are happy with. Um, another is accidents. Um, there was three accidents in five years. Um, so there may well be a perception that there is uh, issues at this roundabout, at the existing roundabout, but the accident stats, uh, which are based on police reported accidents, um, 
they're very low. It doesn't identify that it's a cluster site or uh, or anything like that. But there may be a perception that there is an, uh, an issue at the roundabout. So based on the accidents, because they're so low, there's no indication of clusters. That's another element that we're satisfied with. The, Sorry, uh, sir, I'm afraid it's not a public meeting. <laughs> the, uh, another factor when you're putting in uh, a new junction, um, particularly on a roundabout, you would carry out a road safety audit. Um, at this stage, obviously, it's a preliminary design. Uh, it's not a detailed design. Uh, there's four stages that you go through on a road safety audit. Um, process. So with this being the early design stage, you would do a stage one road safety audit, which has been done. Um, there were, uh, the initial one that was um, provided, uh, as was the uh, original layout of the access that's been um, discussed. Um, there were some concerns raised by the local highway authority. Um, that went through, through a further design process to result in this now, and we're satisfied that the road safety audit that now supports this layout um, is acceptable. That said, um, so this is early, early design stage. It will then progress onto a detailed design stage under, uh, which will be governed under section 278 of the Highways Act. Um, so, at that point, when we're looking at detailed design, that then goes through a stage two road safety audit. Um, so whilst planning consent uh, could be given this evening, there's, there's still another stage to that. Then there's a stage three and a stage four move it, moving further down the, the um, various stages. So everything that's been done um, the design would be to design manual for roads and bridges. Uh, that's the basis that has been um, used uh, and the standards that have been used to produce the layout that you can see here. Um, again, that and various of the documents, uh, national government documents, design documents will be used to go through the detailed design stage as well. Um, I hope that that helps. I don't, can't think of I think anything. That's, that's very useful. So, in layman's terms, if I, if I can put it that way, um, we have got the first four hoops that the applicant has got to go through. Mm -hmm. um, if in the in the event of an approval tonight, and I presume there would be then conditions to make sure this. If subsequently any one of those tests failed, would the application then automatically fail? Um, that it would have to get through a clean road uh, stage two road safety audit before we would permit um, or enter a legal agreement under section 278. So it would have to go through um, a full, a full. A full uh, detailed yeah. assessment of the design. Thank you. Yep. Again, I will hand over. I think, I think Councillor obviously would be very keen to come in. Um, and as I say, I will come in at the end of the debate um, when I've heard what other members have to say. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, so, uh, whilst this is in Aston um, and it is in your board, um, it does impact directly on nothing. Um, in, and I actually used this roundabout. In fact, I came over around about the evening on the way in, uh, and I know the roundabout at the back of my hand. And um, I am very concerned, very concerned uh, at the implications that an additional turn on the roundabout will have for road safety. And whilst I listen to what the highways officer says, uh, I take on board um, the comment. It is um, both sides of the roundabout, from uh, the Leicester side and from the uh, Peterborough side, are long straight stretches. And traffic travels considerably fast along those straight stretches. And I would guess, just, uh, just off the top of my head, um, it's about a mile of a straight stretch 
and uh, the number of times that I've had to brake in order to avoid vehicles <coughs> which um, didn't realise that, that uh, there was a turn to the left or to the right and they just carried on. In fact, I had to stop to uh, allow a, a motorcyclist over the roundabout before me when I was coming back from open the other evening. So uh, this, I believe, uh, is an accident waiting to happen. Um, I, that's one point of seven. And whilst I wholeheartedly support the idea of having um, such a uh, service centre on the A47, and I believe it will be of great benefit to the local community to have the ability to go and charge vehicles um, so close to uh, up in London. Um, I have very real concerns about the road and the access. Um, and actually, yesterday I went over to Oakham and uh, popped into Aldi. And the petrol station um, at Aldi in Oakham, just off the Oakham bypass, um, is plain to see, can be seen quite clearly. And you have to go down um, Barleyfork Road in order to, no, Pillings Road, Pillings Road, sorry. And then you turn across the traffic to get into it. And it's always busy. I mean, the, 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 there have never been any problems. That's off the roundabout. And so I, I can't see why uh, they have proposed, they're proposing to create a new turn off of a roundabout which already has um, five turns on it. One, two, three, four, whatever. It would be the fifth turn. There's the Aston turn as well, as you well know, I'm sure, um, is shielded by trees. Um, and Drivers are often confused by people who are going straight across the roundabout. Um, coming from Uppingham to Oakham, I've got to go across two turns before I get to the open turn. Um, and as I say, it is already, I believe, a dangerous roundabout. And to put this into the mix is just an act, it is an accident waiting to happen. And I really, again, I can't understand why, given the amount of money that has been spent on developing this site, I can't understand why Uppingham Gate, which is across the road, um, and you'll be able to see this site from the A47 in almost the same way you can see it rather than on the left, it's on the right, and it could be signposted off the roundabout and then down into the doctor's surgery and, and round into the the new highlights, and I guess that. But, so, at the moment, I'm minded to refuse this. I'll listen to him, hear what everybody else has to say. Um, so, my 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 judgment has not been clouded because I'll be for it, and then I'll be against it, and I'll be for it, and I'll be against it. From what I've been reading and talking to people, uh, so I'm, I'm for it in principle, but I just don't like where it's going to be located. I believe that it is a bridge too far, if you like, or an exit too far from that roundabout. Thank you, Councillor Oxley. Other members? Looking around. Oh, Councillor Gordon Brown. Thank you, Chair. Um, as the Chair will know, the uh, website has been down for the planning data, and I hope you'll give me some leeway on time to see it, because I have a number of questions I'd like to ask off um, just in order of the paper itself, but uh, the first one is um, SP7, which I think has been referred to earlier this evening, uh, this issue of essential investment um, for public safety purposes. I'd just like to understand from officers what public safety aspects there are which justifies this particular element, um, given that the distance or the time from Leicester to Peterborough is one hour, and the circular that's presented in the document says two hours. Um, so maybe I do all my questions if if you'd prefer, Justin, all seven of them. Yeah, yeah, we'll take a note. Great, yeah. okay, thank you. So that's number point number one. On page 23, um, there's a reference to climate change. Um, paragraph 21, and it says, the drainage scheme will need to be reviewed before 40 years to 40% climate change. I'm not really clear what that means. Maybe you could clarify that point. Um, on page 25, 
uh, paragraph 43, there's a request by the, um, uh, from the ecological appraisal seeking a landscape and ecology management plan, uh, but there doesn't appear to be a condition relating to that in the document. And again, I can't see the documents to see why that's now been removed um, from the conditions, uh, nor is it uh, discussed elsewhere in the document. Uh, on page 26, there's a recommendation from the um, Environmental Protection Department asking for the applicant to demonstrate that such a scheme would exceed the criteria set out for rural lighting. And again, in a rural setting, I think it's important we understand that. Um, and then I've got a question over signage. There's no reference to signage at all. And given the sensitivities of McDonald's and their signage, which was in an urban area, um, I'm sure that the signage in this particular location is even more sensitive. And I'd like to know what the why there's no reference to that and if there should be a condition asking for uh, any change, uh, any requirement to come back for, for that in the future course. Um, I think that's the key point. Oh, yeah, I think I seem to remember in the new local plan, um, which has now been rejected, of course, sadly, um, there was a discussion about um, developers, while they provided some electrical points, they should also provide the underground uh, conduit for subsequent um, electrical points. So that electrical charging points could be added at a later date on a sequential basis. Um, and I don't see anything from, again, I can't see anything in the, develop, in the design access statement because I can't see that. Um, whether that was asked for, I had what was asked the developer whether that was the case or not. Uh, unfortunately, as time ran out. Uh, so those are the key points I have, uh, Chair. Okay. Um, uh, Chairman, Mr. Johnson. Yeah, if I, if I go through some, I might pull Nick in to, to, to comment on some of them. Um, in terms of the signage, well, I won't necessarily go through them in order, um, forgive me for that. Um, in terms of signage, um, that would be the subject of a, a separate application which we would have control over at, at that point. So um, with the McDonald's one, they came in at the same time because we knew who the, uh, who the final end user was. In this instance, we don't know who the final end user is, um, but when the advert um, consent comes through, if this is approved, then we would have full control, control over that at that point. Um, in terms of the... Um, Obviously, the policy in terms of the emerging local plan that's that's gone away. There is a um, plan that Nick has referred to, and um, that has been submitted that does show the area where the petrol filling pumps are is to be um, uh, protected. Uh, Nick's got the plan up there that shows um, that that area will be preserved for um, the uh, electrical um, facilities in future, and also um, for the hydrogen. Um, point to the to the uh, north of those as well so there is a plan that does show how it ca can be um, used going forward um i don't know the practicalities and we'd have to go back to to the developers to ask them in terms of whether the conduit in could be put in at this point with the petrol pumps going in there now it might be something that that they would look to do i'm presuming that they will look to be putting in some conduit in there already because they've already said that they are um, putting in a significant investment in terms of future proofing the site. So a, an element will be in there and that is something that if members were concerned about, we could potentially discuss with the applicants and potentially condition. Um, in terms of the rural lighting, sorry, you're concerned with that. Uh, there was a um, paragraph 47, a recommendation for environmental protection asking the applicant to demonstrate the scheme would meet the uh, zone E2 rural lighting. Nick, did you have anything back from, from them in, in terms of, of that? I think I think that's probably the best, the most appropriate way for. Uh, 
And then, Nick, in terms of the ecology management plan, I think I think I did see reference to um, which relates to ecology, doesn't it? That's page 16. There, I've it? read that, but yeah. you two don't tie up, and I'm not going to tie up any subsequent comments from ecology saying we don't require a landscape and ecology management plan now because we're satisfied with the ecology appraisal. I think that's, some, so that's something that, again, we can um, add if, if, if necessary, Nick. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm presuming that the majority of that is being carried out in terms of the ecology appraisal that was undertaken by FPCR, but we, we can double check that and make sure that that is the case. Um, the SP7 essential um, infrastructure, I think this was something that you looked at, wasn't it, Nick, in terms of that there isn't a specific definition of what what is deemed essential um, in, in terms of the infrastructure. Um, the applicant made reference to essential in terms of providing the electrical facilities as as um, infrastructure changes and there's demand for for that. Um, there's also the um, the provision of uh, rest stops along along that road, and it, this was one that was for a 24 hour uh, essential rest stop. So that, that is how we've sort of looked at it. It's an accumulation of all of those points that, together to, to deem it to be um, acceptable under that SP7. Was, was the final point? Sorry. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Yeah, sorry, Nick, I'll. Paragraph twenty one. This was from the Lee Flood Authority. Um, so they've said that it's defined to have a forty year lifespan, which in the scheme would therefore need to be reviewed before forty years to forty plus. Are you able to help with? I'm not able to have a quick look see if I can find all the files. Just please let me Yeah. I'm presuming that that, that is a, a case to, to say that the, within 40 years it will need to be. Um, reviewed in order to take into account that, that climate change. Um, in, in terms of the application, obviously, we have to judge it based on the information that, that we've got with the application at, at this time. So I don't think it, it's particularly reasonable to, to require a, a, a reassessment within that 40-year per, period. I think it might be useful for clarification just on that point, make sure that it's yeah. not a, what I seem to remember on previous developments, and maybe Nick can help us here, we, we talked about 100% over 100 years or something. Yeah, yeah, that, that would that's be the figure. Was, yeah, that, that's why I was questioning the number one of the yeah. ones, to make sure that's right. Yeah. So maybe if we just check that we're, yeah. we're comparing apples and apples. Yeah. Um, so that's that point on the... Um, LEMP, the, the um, sorry, Landscape Ecology Management Plan. Um, I think it'd be useful just to make a reference to that, that um, we would expect them to have a plan right. that meets the we, ecology appraisal. Yeah, we can make sure that that, that condition is amended accordingly. Uh, same with lighting, uh, that it, uh, if it were to be approved to be to meet zone E2 as recommended environment protection. Um, I just, because there's no, nothing in the um, plans for signage might be useful just to make a comment uh, for the avoidance of doubt 
that any signage would be required to um, have a, a, sub, a separate. We can add a, add a note for that. Um, I think those are the key points that I've got. I, I, I'm somewhat similar to Council Oxley. I, uh, I look at it and go, what a great idea. Now I look at it again and go, I'm not so sure about it. So I'm, I'm, I'm still in the middle of the road at this point in time. But I listen to the other members' comments. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Two questions for clarity. Firstly, um, the, the, the front part, which is going to be cooking around the roundabout, to the um, to the site. Uh, what provision is there going to be for the crossing of the busy A47? Because that, to me, seems like a, a disaster waiting to happen with um, foot traffic going over a main strategic route. And secondly, as far as um, disability access, um, uh, in my travels around the country, I go to number of facilities, and only one disabled space seems very minimal for a um, site of such of such a size. I would have, I don't know what the minimum should be, but I would certainly think that should be increased if this would be increased. So um, the footpath that we're provision. Um, in terms of crossing the, the, the various roads um, would just be a central refuge um, it, at, at the, the halfway point um, across each of the junctions. And that goes all the way round the, the entire um, roundabout. Um, in terms of the disabled parking facilities, Nick, do you have the, the numbers up there? Can you see that? Phase for each disabled employee plus two days of crossing. Um, it would be useful if we could have a, a little more volume on the on the discussion when appropriate. I think I think the the issue is is that the 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 car parking provision does it doesn't specify a number specifically in terms of it talks about in, employees and visitors to to the side. One space has been considered acceptable. If members are concerned and feel that there should be an additional disabled access uh, space put in there. And obviously, that's that's something that we can um, go back and seek to secure. I come on this route a lot, but for like me, I can't picture the A forty seven exit. Is that island in the middle new? Does that therefore put in a right to left curve, getting rid of the straight of the A forty seven directly onto the round? Yeah, sorry. sorry through you chair um so the island is existing um it's being modified um to change sort of the outer edge of the roundabout the footway that comes up Iston road actually goes around on the um, western side actually already goes up and round 
the, uh, the th uh, two of the accesses, the A47, uh, I can't remember, sorry, the other road, um, and then goes off up the A6003, is it? Yeah. So um, you've already got that scenario, but it, it's slightly worse there. At least this one, you've got a central re refuse point to, um, you know, uh, to keep them safe, basically, if they're wanting to cross at that point. Um, well, the message is more in the road I have to the south as far as Martin's point about the long strange roundabouts. Is that is the direction of that um, entrance into the roundabout changing so there is more of a curve which is going to slow traffic down, or is that as it is existing? Um, at the moment, I think that's as existing, but because the level, as I mentioned earlier, the level of detail. Um, at this stage is not great. So um, it's a detailed design stage where we'll start looking at, you know, the high level of detail um, and, and potentially changing um, sort of the entry radius into the roundabout. So if we were wanting to look at it, we could look at conditioning uh, measures to mitigate the speed of traffic by slowing it down by increasing the curvature of that entry? Uh, Yes, you could. Um, I'm only hesitating on the basis that obviously it is an existing roundabout and an existing junction at the moment. Um, the a speed survey has been carried out on um, the A6003 and the a, both arms of the A47. Um, and they did, just to pick up on another comment that was mentioned earlier, um, the speeds are well within, um, obviously, the, the, the national speed limit that's signposted, but obviously an assessment wouldn't have been done sort of directly on the access um, and the entrance into the roundabout. So uh, that's certainly something we could look at in terms of the detailed design. There's certainly sufficient land for it. Sorry, Councillor Crane. Sorry, just to go back to the footpath. Um, the public footpath goes through a small gate and you can see a purple gate there to each side. And I presume it's going to be decided on the opposite side of the road because you walk football across that public footpath. There is no refuge in the middle of the road um, at that point where that footpath crosses the A47. And from my recollection of the site visit, there's no footpath either down, down either side of the A47. Is there any provision to put a footpath in so that we can actually get, get to the safe refuge? I don't think there is there. It, 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 right yeah, there's yeah. a public right of way that there isn't there. I think the, the proposal is, though, to so, um, continue the footpath along. Um, the opposite side that and to to join in with the existing footpath that's on going towards Uppingham Gate, isn't it, Nick? Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. So, so, so there's a where the coming out of Uppingham at the moment, and there's a footpath that stops just before you get to the roundabout. The proposal is to continue that footpath all the way along. So that you'll be able to walk down, not the public footpath that you're talking about that that's on the south south side of the uh, south side of 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 the A forty seven. Thinking that if, if people are actually walking through that um, site, they're going to use a shortcut through up in the gate, aren't they? One of the two footpaths. That blue dotted line isn't the footpath sign. No. 
the footpath is further down, the footpath is towards um, where that purple dotted line through the site is where Nick's highlighting now. It's on the opposite side, somewhere around there. Yeah, and that was my point, really. There is no footpath down the side of the A47, but where that footpath crosses over the A47. It is a public right of way, and it's got, at the moment, it's public right of way. Um, that's its status. It's not heavily trafficked, so I understand. I, I could be told from local knowledge that that's different, but certainly the public rights of way officer has told me that the, the usage, existing usage, is very low. Um, because we're trying to encourage people to use um, a more suitable route, in fact, the developers haven't even put in a connection around the eastern side of the roundabout and down to the bus stop. That was something I'd requested. Um, because people will walk here and it's better to have a provision in for them to walk safely, um, you know, an off-road rather than trying to walk along grass verges, yeah. um, etc. So that, that was the reason that the request was put in and they agreed um, to put that in. Just a, a point of information uh, with regards to um, the uh, traffic islands. Um, there are traffic islands um, on 6003, um, both sides of the roundabout, and the 847 both sides of the roundabout, but they're just short clipped um, traffic islands. Um, their purpose really is to try and slow down the traffic. Because it does, the traffic is bent on, it starts its journey around the roundabout from that um, initial uh, traffic island. There is, there is no traffic island um, on the Aston Road. Um, and uh, as far as the footpath is concerned, um, directly opposite um, that footpath, which goes to wing, um, if you go, you go through the hedge and you're faced with a bank. Which is about um, four foot high. <laughs> you have to scramble up that. Um, so, uh, and my understanding is that the, the, the path actually goes along the side of 47 and then it cuts across a field further up. Um, but so, if you try to get into the site from the south side of uh, the A47, um, you, as I say, you will find it very difficult getting there from up to the gate. Um, Other members, anyone who has tell us that Paul Brown. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, one of the key things that I think is, is that we're looking at SP7 is the word essential. Um, I've all, we've already been said there's no definition of essential, but if it's in open countryside, it has to be essential, it has to be a need established. And if there is a, a need, then I think that need has to be capable of, capable of being met properly. There is no need in this instance for a coffee shop in, in open countryside. There is no need uh, for a service store. There is a need for uh, electric points, but I think this could, and it's probably not the right horse bits involved in it, but it could be met elsewhere. And I think that, that to say that there is such a need that it overrides the presumption against developing in the countryside is too much for me to accept. And I feel that uh, this development, as such as it's presented, is not one that we should go ahead with. Thank you very much. Anyone else who like to come in? If if not, I will um, make my contribution as board member. Um, if I could refer you to the executive summary <coughs> on page twelve, it's probably um, the clearest way forward. Um, it starts saying the scheme is for high quality, a twenty-four hour roadside service. Um, this clearly is a subjective comment and um, it scarcely reflects what might kindly be called the functional nature of the, the buildings um, uh, that are proposed. And taking up from the last comments, um, 
I did raise the question on site visit, and I quite understand that it is a different policy, but in terms of impact on the countryside, were this residential, um, that it would be um, drafted out without even coming to committee. It is open countryside um, um, development. Um, and so I don't agree that it will not be prominent. I think if you're driving um, either on the A47 or particularly if the A6003 from Preston, it will be prominent, um, uh, whatever landscape see. Um, it said it will not impact adversely on Uppingham Town Centre. That is purely speculative. Nobody knows, and it has already been pointed out, that there are electrical charging points in Uppingham. There are plenty of provision um, for um, food and so on and so forth. So I don't really uh, think that um, is itself a um, thing. And so we then come to what seems to be the strong point in all this, um, climate change and electrical charging points. Um, again, I am no engineer, I'm not a physicist, but as far as I know, the only electricity that occurs naturally is lightning in a thunderstorm. Uh, otherwise, somebody has got to provide the electricity, whether it is by nuclear or gas or fracking, or whatever other means, solar power. Somebody has got to produce that electricity. Now, members will know that we, in January of this year, adopted a, if I can put the shorthand, green policy. Now, that was, among other things, it aimed, by implication anyway, um, to discourage the use of cars rather than to encourage them, whatever their means of propulsion. Um, what I would also go on to say that, like Councillor Oxley, I use that roundabout two or three times a week. I come from Uppingham usually um, and turn off to Aston. I would say I've, I am getting a car coming west from Leicester. One in five cars will assume that I am turning either to Preston or going right round um, to um, uh, around the Peterborough direction. I have now taken to go at a geriatric crawl across that junction so that at least if I'm hit, um, my heirs will be able to claim the insurance. It really is anecdotally dangerous. Now, again, members will have heard me say time and again, it is very difficult and very unwise to go against measurable highway criteria because it can be measured. But in this particular case, I do feel very strongly, and this brings me to the next point, that road was detrunked. All the criteria and all the criteria that have been adduced about the need for this between Leicester and Peterborough is based on the assumption that it is still trunk road. It is not. And, and therefore, that would be my feeling, should we, should it be uh, for him to reject um, the officer's recommendation, um, that that is a very key point. And finally, this is agricultural land. Now, I know that Councillor Andrew Brown um, can't take part in this, um, and, but he is present, um, and he's far better informed on these matters than I am. Um, but my information is that 30 years ago, one generation, we were 80% able to provide food from our own country. That is now 58%. It has dropped 20% in a generation. You may think this is a tiny um, little piece of land. It mentions, oh, it's poor quality habitat. I'm not interested to that extent in the habitat. I am interested in yet again, these small pieces of land are taken out of agricultural production, whether it's livestock or arable. And it means that English, British farmers are having to produce more food from less land. Once you have actually altered the nature of the use of the land, you've altered it for good. And so that would be my final point, um, that I certainly cannot um, 
support this application as it stands. I have reservations. I don't think the benefits outweigh, um, and I think in doing so, um, I'm probably, uh, well, certainly representing um, the feeling of residents in the ward I represent as well. That is not the major reason. All I promise to do is make sure that their views are heard, not necessarily to support them. In this case, I happen to. Uh, so I'm looking for a proposal, please. Councillor Oxley. Well, um, I would like to propose that we refuse the application. Uh, basically, it is, in my opinion, dangerous to add uh, to a roundabout which already has speeding vehicles on it. Um, it is in open countryside. When we went to the site visit, it, it was sheep in the field. Um, and it will be seen from uh, a distance. I believe that personally it should be the other side of the road, in the gate, where there will be access to um, electricity. They would have to bring in electricity from somewhere in order to feed this uh, garage, this charging station. So, um, as I say, I recommend refusal based on um, all those points that I've made. And I welcome any other comments that the members may make to underpin that refusal. Do you all have a second, please? Johnson Banks. Um, and uh, Mr. Johnson, yes, you'll, you'll want some reasons for. Well, I mean, uh, listen to, to, to the reasons I've got. I, I've, I've noted down um, the concerns about uh, dangers to, to the highway safety with the additional arm to, to the roundabout. I've got the, the rural location and, and that it would be prominent in, in, in that location. And that um that there's a, a site that is allocated in the, I think the neighborhood plan to on the other side of the road I, I'm happy with most of those my big concern is with the highway safety point of view I would suggest that 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 not be included we heard from our own highways engineer today I think it would be very difficult for us to defend that at appeal and um, could potentially result in us having costs against us. Please bring me real. It has to be severe impacts anyway on the highway. And obviously, if you're going to come and go against lots of recommendations on that one point, then you've got to have facts and actual status and data to be able to support that. Um, and that, that is. So I, I, I feel that slightly yes, difficult just to know about that. Yes. Yes. Uh, have you been considered the uh, mine tax or why have you been considered at some point? I think, I'm trying to yeah, I, I think the highway has uh, made the point now that um, obviously you go through the process, don't you? works the highway and works that need to be done for that and then it was a four-stage approach obviously if, if planning permission was granted for it um it wouldn't be able to be occupied until all of that was done obviously to the to the test that was necessary so that needs to widen and obviously that's when that would be dealt with and that's why the technical i think elements of it can't actually be fully answered at this one point at this point in time Thank you. So um, I think yes, for sure, it's anecdotal evidence of the danger of the roundabout yeah, yeah. on those who use it on a daily basis. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Um, point, that's the so, same. Yeah. Given, given the fact that we do have um, the, uh, the highways um, officer has said that at the moment it stands, um, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't, yet the evidence isn't there to support it. However, my concern is that if you add another um, turn into the mix, that will potentially create uh, confusion from uh, users, existing users of the, of the roundabout. Um, and it could actually potentially increase the risk of collisions on the roundabout. And that's why I included it in my um, recommendation. However, um, if 
uh, the uh, if Justin feels that we should uh, take it out in order to assist in uh, the uh, in carrying it through, then I will withdraw the element of the matter. I mean, I, do, do you want to come in at the end of the, yeah, the no, I, John's? You know, I, I, I think that's fine. I just want to just to cl clarify, just sorry, just clarify my point. So I've got this reason down so that I've fully understood what Councillor Oxley is providing. So I'm just trying to find my policy numbers here. So then it, it would be. Um, Concerns about the rural location and the prominence of the building, and that would be in terms of it being contrary to policies um, SP7 and um, CS19. Um, and then um, and then reference to the neighborhood plan in terms of the the site to the on the opposite side, which is allocated for employment and also filling station. Station, yeah, yeah. And, and I think to Councillor Paul Brown's point about it, whether or not it is essential, I think that that is really um, underlining what Councillor is saying. So that, that we don't consider it to be essential. Think it's essential. Yes. Visual immunity. Visual immunity. Yes. 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 I realise that we have not, in fact, actually reached a decision yet. But <laughs> it is it, in the event form. Yes. yes. Um, yes. I've got, I've got if, you're, if you're content with that. Right. At this point, having been proposed and seconded for refusal, um, all those who are in favour of that proposal, please show. Porter. And against? Three. Three. That is duly um, I carried, the refusal is carried. We have now put the carpet before the horse and gone uh, gone ahead and given you the, the reason for that um, refusal. Um, so that, um, that concludes that part of the meeting. Um, I am going to hand over to my Vice Chairman, um, Councillor Beggy. Um, again, anybody who came to that um, does not wish to so for the rest of the meeting, there will be a brief uh, adjournment. And if you wish to leave at that point, please do. I shall be in that direction. Yeah. Do we wait to see what we're doing just there? Uh, no, I'm going. Okay. Yeah. Um, members, if we can now continue, if that's okay. Uh, just a quick point of order. Can we just please make sure we speak up and also reduce the rustling of papers? I've had a I've had a report that there's lots of people on Zoom can just hear rustling. Um, so, so can we rustle that, if that's okay? Um, the next part of the agenda is to consider application 2021-0736 FUL, Corner Meadow Farm, Wood Lane, Braunston in Rutland. Proposed dog training barn and paddock and extension to existing um, car park provision with a recommendation from the officers for approval. Um, at this point, could I hand over to Justin to present the report? Thank you. 
We have the uh, barn, which measures approximately 30 metres by 15 metres, which is located at the western side of the site. The existing car park and uh, paddock area is here, and the proposal is to increase the, the car parking area, as shown on the, the plan outlined there, with an enclosed grass training paddock, an additional area for outdoor use. This is a plan that shows um, the, the structural frame for, for the building. Um, but as you can see from that, the building would have an agricultural appearance to it. And it is proposed to be clad with um, a, a green cladding to help it uh, assimilate into its surroundings. It's the next slides just show some of the proposed access way this is looking towards the access road and again you can see uh, this is from wood lane and the, looking down the access track you can see there that there is um, uh, ability for cars to pass for um, it there's a condition requiring for the first five meters and um, it is slightly longer than that but then once you get to this fence post here that you can just see by the gate is then single track all the way down to, to the actual site but it is a straight view and you can see cars coming up and down the track all the way. This is a shot just looking down uh, Woods Lane. This is one looking back from the access point onto Woods Lane and you can see there's been some hard surfacing done there. This is just the view out, out from the site, and I'll, I'll come on to this in, in a minute, but you can see that, that at the moment it is um, uh, basically agricultural land with the paddock um, adjacent. This is um, further down the site, so you can see here is the existing car parking. The proposal will be to put car parking in the area of the field just directly adjacent to that to provide additional parking. And then towards the back of the site, uh, in front of where that tree is, that is where the barn would be sited. And this is just a, a, another uh, view just zoomed in. So the barn would be here, there'd be paddock that, that would be fenced off for training of the dogs, similar to um, the existing area, and then car parking adjacent, similar, similarly surfaced to, to what's there now. This is a view looking down the track and you can see that the actual barn from the track wouldn't be visible because of the existing uh, landscaping that's there. I had a good walk around the, the site and some of the uh, public footpaths right away so they're nearby. And, and the site is really well screened from distant views um, by um, existing mature tree planting and hedge, hedgerows in, in the village. It's approximately, um, 500 550 meters from from the um from the village which is located to the north I should have pointed that out on the on the plan sorry so here's bonston village which you can see to the north and that distance from from the the south here of the village is about 550 meters the applicants um set out in their submission that um they do um they are uh, UK sniffer dog instructor, they do um, dog training, uh, college instructor, um, and the reason for for the 
development is that they have a successful existing business that operates down there. Um, they do have issues with um, uh, bad weather, whether that be not just rain, but also um, when it's uh, too hot as well, um, that there is a need to have some undercover training area. And that's why the application has been put forward. I'm sure they'll explain in a bit more detail the justification. So in terms of impact upon the countryside, sustainability um, and, and the policies, um, as I set out in the report relating to non-residential development in the, the countryside, we've already talked about SP7, um, increased traffic and, and the result of the development on the river road network and then impact on neighbouring farm, farmers from use of the shared single access track and impact on residential amenity. So um, the proposal complies with the policies um, in the development plan in terms of the core strategy, um, CS16 and SP7, which do allow for um, the expansion of existing rural enterprises and existing businesses, um, so long as they're appropriate to the, the character and appearance of the area. The proposed building does have an agricultural, agricultural appearance to it, which would, wouldn't look out of place in the countryside. Although, as I've already said, it is particularly well screened from distant views. Local highway authority has raised no objections to the access and parking arrangements. There's been significant concern from uh, local residents about the uh, access arrangements, but uh, as I've said there, local highway authority have raised no objections there is parking provided on site and um, so all cars would park well clear of the, the highways and it would then be the the comings and goings to to the site which the applicant has indicated and they hold about between 12 and 20 classes per week and they're usually between um five to eight eight dogs on, on site at any one time in their in their training sessions um, but there's obviously um, potential for some crossover and to use the building for some training sessions and then use the um, paddocks as well for, for additional training. Um, so that might mean that there was an, an increase in, in dogs be, beyond the um, five, five to eight, which is, is an example that's been given. Um, there are no archaeological issues, no ecology, ecological issues subject to conditions. Um, there are uh, this pond nearby that has great crested newts or potential for great crested newts, but subject to conditions, the ecologist has raised no objections. And um, as I've said, given the separation distance, um, there isn't a significant impact on residential amenity from noise and disturbance. Um, there have been some additional items and um, uh, some additional. Um, comments in, in support and objection. As I've said out in the uh, additional item paper, um, there's I think 54 representations from the public um, that were um, uh, supporting the application. There have been, I believe, two additional objections raising concerns about the um, proposals and they do raise concerns about the capacity of the roads um, and, and the roads not being wide enough, um, that there's not a pedestrian footpath to the site um, and, and that it would be detrimental to, to highway safety generally. Um, there, there has been, I think one of the objections did support the overall principle of the, the use, but just raised concerns about the, the highway safety. So in terms of the recommendation, it is recommended for approval as per the um, uh, conditions set out in the report, but also three additional conditions that I set out on the screen and in the uh, addendum paper. That is to, to secure control and make sure that we have um, a full understanding of how, how the site is to be used. I suggested that the maximum number of dogs allowed on site in relation to the training centre, that that should be limited to 50 dogs at any one time. And that does also take into account the um, uh, those coming to the site and leaving the site and the handover. Um, also that the um, paddock and building should only be used for dog training facilities and for no other purpose. So it's there solely for 
dog training and for no other uses and that the working hours are are restricted as per the um, submission that that's for 6 a.m until 10 p.m um in in the evening the applicant said that um they do tend to have some uh, early and late one-to-one -one sessions that go on till about half past nine and then the final half an hour is then um, finishing up and tidying away. But again, given the location um, uh, away from any nearby residential properties, um, noise and disturbance shouldn't be a significant issue. So on that basis and subject to those additional conditions, it's recommended for approval. Thank you. We have a number of deputations. Welcome to the number of people. I'll come around here so I can see everything. Just like to see. There we are. Thank you. And chair. There's not many accessible places to meet up. Unfortunately, I couldn't help during the winter period because the ground was so wet. So I couldn't do any extra training. And for me to do that, that made me feel important helping an animal. I love animals, like a lot of people do. But having somewhere safe to actually be able to do this with animals and also with my own dog, it, 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 means, a, it means a great deal to me because it gives me that out every week 
I can go out and I can just relax. I haven't got to worry. I haven't got to look over my shoulder. I haven't got to worry if my dog's going to run off. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. But yeah, it's just, you know, it, it's just something that's going to mean, mean a lot for me and my dog and other people that are in the same situation as me. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm Sue Willits and I've lived in Bronson for 22 years. I've been an active member of the village during that time and I'm currently church warden. I was first aware of this application from the Rutland Mercury, which I was reading just last Sunday. I was really surprised to learn that the application in June I was able to access the planning uh, site and I noted that there are 200 supporters of the application, of which only two are residents of Braunston. I am concerned about the impact that the traffic will bring through the village and the safety of Braunston residents. There are always parked cars on the village streets, as the majority of houses do not have garages or drives for residents' vehicles. From Braunston to Wood Lane, the road is barely wide enough for two passing cars. However, tractors and horse boxes use this road too. Vehicles will drive onto the grass and be able to pass to, and destroy the verge. For vehicles coming to Braunston from Preston and Ridlington, there are parts of the road which are now only wide enough for one vehicle. The verges here are already damaged and I fear they will be eroded further. Many residents enjoy walking through the village. There is no footpath along Wood Lane, past the church and the village hall, and so people walk in the road. The additional traffic will put pedestrians at risk. The street lighting in this area is poor. Well, I did wonder whether it's adequate, but no, it's poor. Village residents, myself included, carry a torch in this area during dark evenings. This will be especially hazardous with additional traffic. In the winter, Wood Lane is not gritted, and so drivers will have to take additional care because of the icy roads. I am pleased to know that Braunston Parish Council objects to the application because of the impact that the traffic will bring, and I feel fully supported by the Parish Council, whose members are all residents of Braunston, and they too will be affected personally by the impact that this application will have on village residents. If Rutland County Council were to improve the roads in the area and to establish a footpath and improve street lighting in the village for the safety of pedestrians and residents, then I would have to re-evaluate. But at the moment, I fear for my safety with the additional traffic that this facility will generate in Braunston. Thank you. Good evening. Firstly, I'd like to say that Braunston residents are supportive of the Meadowview Dog Exercise Training Paddock. It has for many years provided a very valuable service in training, exercising, and developing healthy dogs. As a village, we also, encourage, we also encourage small businesses to locate themselves to the area and as, as such. That being said, we have, we have terms on the scale of the proposed development. As Sue has said, Wood Lane is narrow and the planned increase in traffic would have a detrimental effect on the lane, lane surface, verges and current lane users, pedestrians, cyclists, and other motorists alike. There are frequent accidents along the road for, for, for speeding and because of the narrow nature and, and, and the bends on the road. The route to the dog paddock from Wood Lane, as has already been explained, is a single track with no passing points. At the proposed session changeover, there could be as many as 16 vehicles negotiating the track in opposing directions, resulting in congestion and a distinct possibility of vehicles having to reverse into Wood Lane, 
once again increasing the likelihood of a road traffic accident. The significant increase in traffic, one dog equals one vehicle, plus employees and surface vehicles will be completely at odds with the county's sustainability green goals. And I would say that the recommendation, which I've only just seen, that at any one time there could be 50 dogs, that equates to 50 cars. Firstly, the car proposed car park is only for 16 vehicles. 50 vehicles equates to 50 dogs. The proposed training barn measuring 30 meters by 15 meters by six and a half meters high, 20 feet in old, in old money, would be, seem to be disproportionate to the needs of training just eight dogs. The structure would be seen from Wood Lane, despite the application stating it would not be visible from a public road. The stated operating hours are 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. The interior of the barn will be illuminated between the hours of with accompanying light pollution. Currently, residents of Nossington Road, an uninterrupted view across the Gouache Valley, this would no longer be the case if the barn was erected. In conclusion, the planning application states an increase of employees to four. This would indicate outdoor training taking place concurrently with indoor training, leading to even heavier traffic flow borne out by the 50 dogs at any one time. A submission for a smaller development may be a suitable comp. The suggested conditions being a reduction to the barn footprint and a significant reduction to the height of the addition of, and the addition of substantial landscaping. Access and egress to the track from Wood Lane in a forward gear only. Operating hours to be reduced for, to dawn till dusk. A minimum of 30 minutes between each training session to allow the uh, vehicles to, to access and, and, and exit. Finally, point of issue here, of the 300 plus online comments received, the great majority of supportive comments are from outside of the county. I'm sure the respondents are genuine in their support. However, they cannot be aware of the local impact and the proposed development, the proposed development creates. Thank you for your time. Members, we have any questions? Um, Councillor Andrew Brown. Uh, thank you, Mr. Allen. You mentioned about the interior illumination of the barn. Yes. Um, how's that going to impact on light pollution? Presumably, the light will be inside the house. Because it's an, an agricultural style barn uh, with, with metal walls and roofing, uh, light will escape. And one also assumes that the car park would have to be illuminated as well for safety reasons. Okay, thank you. Justin, can you ask that question about lighting? There's no proposed funds for, for lighting that, that I've seen. Obviously, the applicant will speak. Um, if members are concerned about lighting, um, a specific condition can be um, attached to any commission in terms of requiring any details of any light into the car park and that could be kept to a low level I would think. Members, any more questions? Thank you sir. Let me call um, um, Gemma Fezzabea, the applicant's representative. Have I, if I've even got close to that, I apologise. This business delivers a necessary service, provides benefits to the countryside, and offers inclusive leisure activities for all ages and abilities. Thirdly, the proposed use is considered appropriate within this rural context and is a use that could not be reasonably expected or accommodated within a built up settlement of the town and village. Accordingly, the proposed barn has been sensitively designed to respect the rural location and its agricultural appearance with the size and position appropriate for the level of activities associated with the proposed change of use. 
There are similar and larger farms locally on other farms. Fourthly, the site is well screened from the surrounding landscape and the local village, and it is placed so specifically. It includes car parking for up to 16 vehicles, allowing for the crossover of lines as they arrive right past the path of their car to the maximum reach in the car. The existing access is also, also to be improved to the benefit of the existing dog walking paddock and the shared access way to the satisfaction of the local highways authority who have no The lack of local support and positive comment received in regard to the application and understand that over 200 letters of support were received during the consultation period, plus support from two of the larger landowners immediately adjoining the application site. There is clearly a perception that proposed use is not only much needed, but that it is considered acceptable and appropriate in this location. We genuinely believe the proposal, proposal to be wholly compliant with the relevant local and national policy for such uses in this area. We believe it acceptable in both matters of principle and in design and detail. Accordingly, we respectfully request that the application before you is approved. Thank you. Members, any questions? Um, sorry, Gordon, I didn't know if you were first. Capital. <laughs> Councillor Mark Oxley, please. Thank you. Yes, I have a question. Well, I have a couple of questions. First of all, um, you mentioned that the uh, highways, um, so are you going to widen uh, the access? I note in, in the, um, the highways department said that um, they would want the access and then into a hardbound material measuring at least five metres wide to allow two vehicles to pass clear of the highway. Um, that, so that's, whereabouts is that going to be on the uh, is that as it just comes off of the lane? Yes, so that condition has been, that condition has been accepted. And um, are, you, are you planning to widen the, the track from the lane up to the field? Yes, I um, think um, you can probably see it just here. So you can see the board, you can see the board of, the, of the lane itself. And um, the track starts on the other side of where the person is. And that is the area that's underneath the highways and asks to be extended. Okay. That's my first question. Now, uh, electricity. Um, so, how do you propose getting electricity into the barn? I, 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 because, as I say, if you're, if, you're, if you're going to be having people there from six in the morning <coughs> until ten at night, they're not going to do it in the dark. So, it will need to be lit. So, how do you, how do you propose lighting the interior of the barn? So, firstly, there are people there from six in the morning until ten at night all day, every day. Um, there is, an, there is electricity already to the, um, the existing um, uh, paddock, um, which I believe can be just run up to the barn itself, which is the cost of the owner. So you're not proposing, I mean, um, perhaps a sustainable... Um, I'm going to answer the question. I was just going to say, I can't see how, it's a, it's a very large structure you're proposing to be. And I just can't see how the electricity is going to be fed into it in order to be able to, to make it usable. Um, the structures are no larger than any other agricultural barn. In fact, it's slightly lower than, than many of the local barns around. Um, the electricity, the site, the site itself, the barn itself has to be secure. So the doors have to be closed. There are, um, uh, have to be fenced windows. The, the, there is some daylight that will come in during the day, so there will be probably no necessarily a need for electricity all the time. Um, there is an electricity supply that will supply electricity at those times when it is required um, in the winter when it's dark at four o'clock, for example, and there may be a training class from four to five, five to six. Okay. So, does that help? Um, yes, thank you. Thank you. Can, uh, Councillor David Blanksford. Uh, yes, uh, could you tell me how many doubles will be on the site for people to sign? There will be potentially, and not again, 
not so we are through the day. Um, this is right as one person, one dog trainer running this business at the moment. Um, and the uh, classes are, I think the maximum number of classes are 16, um, uh, between 10 and 16, roughly. That's a picture of one to one, so only one dog on site. Um, and then if it's a class, it could be a maximum of eight for anything between five and eight dogs. Generally, we're not, we're not going to need eight. Um, that would mean there will be dog, uh, a class of eight, perhaps the maximum. Um, there will be in the existing paddock. There may be a dog, um, one or two dogs, perhaps if someone has two dogs or three dogs. Um, and then at crossover times, when the classes change, there is a gap. Of, um, at the moment, the post gap is 15 minutes between classes, and there is a crossover time. There is absolutely no benefit to having more dogs on site than is required, because you cannot train dogs when they are in an aroused state or in a state of fear. So there will only ever be a number of dogs on that site that is suitable for the training required for the dog. So, so we're, we're running out of time. We've got three minutes. Please. All right, I'm just going to make it. Uh, Sorry, Dave. We've we, we've run out of time, but I, I do want to give okay. I do want to give Gore an opportunity to to ask his question. So if you could be quick, I'm sure you can pick up your point and debate, David. Thank you. Coming back to that point, I want to pursue that. Um, I'm struggling to understand, therefore, why a limit of 50 uh, dogs on site at any one point in time, when in fact you're looking at typically 16 or maybe more closer to 20. And therefore, I wonder whether there's an, uh, a situation where uh, a much lower limit on the number of dogs on site at any one time would be acceptable to your client. Um, so, I, I think we can discuss that with you. We can discuss that with the development officer. Um, the number of people you suggested, it's, it's not um, a particular issue. Um, there would be, we would probably want to set a limit because we have to take into account the crossover class and the number of people using so a number in the 20s would be more appropriate. I would say probably a number in the early 30s, just to be absolutely sure. But again, I can I can assure the, the committee that there probably isn't going to ever be that number of dogs on site at any one time. It's just that in order to comply with the rules that we're setting, we just want to make sure that we're covered. <laughs> We know there's a lot of thank you. I think we can cover that over in debate between yeah. three members as we go. Thank you. Um, thank, thank you very much, and thank you for allowing us to bear the time. Very, very kind. Um, I now open it up to members for um, general debate. I haven't got eyes on both sides of my head, so if Tommy you could look left and I'll look right. Councillor <laughs> <laughs> Oxford. Thank you. Yes. Um, I'm just going to ask you to just comment on the previous speaker's comment about as per the, the, uh, the and it, I, I think that does show that there is a real need for uh, this facility. Um, it, it has proven itself um, that there is a need with, with an open paddock. And so I, I can understand the reasons why um, the application is being made um, in order to expand on, on that vision. Um, However, I think I do have some concerns with regards to um, an increase in traffic on, on the road. Um, also, an increase in um, presumably the waste that's generated by the dogs um, who will be there on site and where that will be going. Um, and the lighting as well. And we mustn't lose sight of the fact that whilst it will look like uh, and it will be a barn in a field. Um, at the moment, there isn't a barn in that field. Um, and we, it, it would need to be lit, uh, albeit inside. Also, areas of the car park presumably would have to be lit because after four o'clock, uh, I'm sure every in the, in the winter you was well aware of the fact that you can't see your hand in front of your face uh, when you're out in the country. So um, it will change the whole aspect of this piece of ground in relation to its use and um, the village and, and the road that runs alongside it. And that's why it's here this evening um, at the moment. Um, but as I say, I am 
I'm, I totally understand why the definition. I'm minded to, um, I'm minded to go with the officer's approval, officer's recommendation, I should say, which is true. Uh, I will listen to what everybody else has to say, but I think there will need to be further constraints placed on it in order to, I mean, when the first thing that struck me when I read the papers was six in the morning until 10 at night, um, which I think is, uh, whilst we had a, a, an explanation as to why that might be the case, it's not going to be every day. Um, in the winter, that will have more of an impact than in the summer. Um, and I would guess that there will be more demand to use the barn in the winter because of the, the, the way that, uh, in order to be able to use it in the winter. So it, it is actually going to be cranking up the amount of use that it is going to be put to. Um, I would like to see if, if, if possible, and that's why I made the point about electricity, perhaps to make it more sustainable by putting some um, uh, PVC panels on the roof in order to generate uh, energy on site, uh, in order to supplement what's there already. Um, to say I'll listen to what everybody else has to say, but um, I do. I, I think we need it needs to be clarified how many dogs will actually be there, how many vehicles will be using it. Um, <coughs> that needs to be clarified before we're okay, able to make a decision. So, so I'll wait to hear what everybody else has to say. Thank you. Uh, Justin, do you have any comments on any of those points before we carry on? Yes, yes sorry. Um, so in, ter in terms of um, the number of dogs, um, I was in discussion with the applicant and trying to work to a figure um, that, um, because I was aware that it may be a, a concern, but also aware that we weren't likely to have this figure, maximum figure that I've suggested on at any one time. If members have got concerns about that, um, as the applicant's um, spokesperson has said, um, you know, it, it wouldn't be unreasonable for members to, to set a lower amount. I think we've got to bear in mind what's practical and uh, what ensures that the, the business can operate. They, they've talked about um, the numbers and, and the, the crossover times. Um, I would have thought bearing in, in mind that a figure of about 32 would would probably um, you know, allow for the, the maximum number that's likely to be on that site at any one time. And that takes into account having 16 dogs training on the site and then another 16 coming to, to train in the next session. Uh, and the likelihood of them all being there is unlikely. So we could, we could potentially amend that condition. Again, with the lighting, um, I could add a condition on that requires um, precise details of any external lighting and car parking lighting to be submitted to and agreed. Um, in terms of, from, from my own per personal point of view, I don't think we as officers would want to see any um, significant external lighting. So we would only want it to be the absolute minimum from, from a safety point of view. So I'm thinking on, on sites where, where I've stayed um, in holiday sites and things like that in rural locations, they've had them on one metre high post at a very low level that, that don't have a significant impact. And so we could look, put add a condition on and that's what we would look for. So um, yeah, I think there are things and just so I think there's also a question about the removal of um, waste. Dog waste. Again, um, we have used similar con uh, conditions for um, equestrian so we can again put a condition on that requires precise details of how that waste is going to be stored and disposed of um, and request details to be submitted to us. It's similar to what we've used on, like I say, equestrian sites and things like that. Thank you. Can I come back? Uh, but yes, it is supplementary. Yes, it's, yes, it's supplementary. Thank you. Because I mean, the reason I ask the question is because presumably at the moment there isn't access uh, to the site uh, in the hours of darkness. And what this will do is, is actually expand the ability to people, for people to use it during the hours of darkness. So light will actually play a part to play 
Uh, yeah, not not that I'm aware. At the, at the moment, um, it's very low level facilities in terms of um, a paddock and, and a few facilities are on on the site for that are associated with that. But no, not significant use at night. That, 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 I want to make that point. Mm, thank you, um, Councillor Andrew Brown. Uh, thank you, Governor. I noticed just in that there was full planning commission preparation for our July. Um, <coughs> was that barn similar size to this one? Was it um, small? If that was on, a, it, it, it wasn't on this specific site. It, I think it was a, a, a smaller barn and it was on, on the a directly adjacent site, which I think is also owned by, by the by the applicants, but it. Um, I, th I think there was some. Uh, uh, I think there is something there for it. Yes, but it, it's not. It's not the same nature of farm that, that we're looking at now. Right. Okay. And, uh, just Left. Yeah, I had. Yeah, I had picked up on this myself. Um, I have put on the the condition that relates to um, use for dog training facilities only. Um, again, it wouldn't be unreasonable to add a condition that's uh, or to amend that condition to say no kenneling of of dogs on, on, on overnight. Uh, Councillor Gordon Brown. Thank you, Chair. Um, I support the position on the limiting of the numbers. Um, so um, if we could negotiate the number um, around the 30 mark, and I'd be happy to delegate that to the chair and the uh, DM manager to negotiate that with the, the applicant. Uh, lighting, I think that's an important condition. Uh, hours of operation, I'm, I'm struggling with the hours of operation from six till 10. Um, and it's not to do with the actual hours of operation, but the number of people actually traveling at those times, particularly between six and nine in the morning and between you know, eight and 10 at night. And I wonder whether there should be um, a further condition of limiting the number of vehicles moving on and off site for those early and late hours. Um, we don't allow uh, quarries to operate uh, late in the day or early in the morning, so why should we allow this to operate in that way? I think it's the, it's the number is the issue, not the fact it's operated. Yeah. So I wonder um, if we could, uh, again, um, have that as a discussion between the chair, uh, or delegated to the chair and the DM yeah. officers uh, to just clarify that and reduce the potential number of vehicles start and finish of the day. Um, uh, sorry, sorry, can't say. Um, on, on that point, I think it would be difficult to restrict the number of vehicle movements at that time it's it's difficult for us to monitor a, 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 and enforce that part what i would suggest is that we possibly look at the number of um uh, customers that are coming for dog training sessions that sort of thing uh, in those times so that if it if it's low key one to one sessions in that time something like that I think that's that's where I was coming from. So yes, that's the sort of uh, proposal. Um, I, my my comment on signage again applies. Um, obviously, there's no application for signage as far as I can see on this. There, there there's signage. no application for signage. Uh, again, uh, avoidance uh, of doubt. Uh, I mean, I could put a note on, and um, there'll be some some elements of signage that don't require uh, advertisement consent. But um, yes, we can put. Put a note on. And then finally, uh, the chair will like this one uh, class Q <laughs> and the risk of class Q. Yeah. Um, clearly, um, you know, that we have some sensitivity over this. Sorry, class Q is where some individuals, uh, particularly farmers, get permission for developments uh, converting all the farms. I'm not looking at anyone in particular. Um, but you know, there is an issue around that where agricultural buildings can be converted and the risk here could potentially be um, if the, uh, on, um, if, if the um, business was no longer viable and closed down, 
there may be an opportunity for the next five years down the road for that to convert it to house. And clearly that would not be something which we'd be happy about. Is that the case? Is a limitation? No, it, it's um, because it's not in agricultural use, it will be as a dog training facility, then they won't benefit from the Class Q uh, permitted development rights. So uh, any change of use of that building for a dwelling would require planning permission and um, would be something that I would envisage we would uh, resist heavily. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Members, before I ask my questions, anybody else? Um, just a couple of questions, Justin. Um, Gordon's stolen my, my usual question about what the classification is, and it would have been 10 years, so I think, anyway. Um, just a couple of other questions. Um, but, 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 um, as far as the traffic's concerned, there is a number of residents have mentioned accidents, etc. Do we have any statistics or reports on the number of accidents or any cluster sites? Uh, I will defer to the to the highways officer for that that one, Tim. Um, no, in short, um, basically, you get, because of the low level of traffic use, you've got you know a maximum of eight people arriving at any one time, a gap of 15 minutes, it's such a low level of traffic, we would never request an assessment of accident data in the local roads. Thank you. Um, obviously, as the facility, if it was granted permission, gained popularity, what facilities are there of restricting access to the paddock to people outside parking on Wood Lane, for example, and taking dogs onto the paddock? Is the, is the access restricted um the the access is isn't restricted so it, it's single track down there but there there's um what is proposed is is a, is a a reasonably large parking area to accommodate visitors to to the site um and again the restrictions that were putting in place in terms of number of dogs is there to limit the numbers that are coming to make sure that that we don't end up with so many people coming to the site that are above and beyond what we've envisaged. So in theory, with the controls that we've got, there should not be a parking issue with parking down on Woods Lane. Thank you. And um, my final question, um, it was very powerful what Mr. Baldy had to say. I'm interested about what percentage of business is there for um, disabled usage and what, um, what consideration will be made for disabled access to the facility from the car park to the barn, et cetera? Um, uh, as, as you've seen from, from the plans, that there, there, there's not a detailed um, plan there. Um, I, there is a, the track that goes down, but there is nothing to say um, in terms of there being a proposed levelled um, access for specifically disabled access. There was nothing involved in the application in terms of that. Obviously, as part of um, the disability access regs and building regulations, and it's a building that's open to the public, so they will need to comply with those regulations to make sure that it's got a level threshold. So that would be covered off under building regulations, including things such as disabled toilet facilities, etc. Um, I believe so, in, ter in terms of, um, of what's required in that in that building for disabled people. Yes. Okay, so that would definitely be covered off. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, any more questions from members? Um, the proposition as it stands um, is for a approval of the your recommendation is for approval. Um, do I have a second for that motion? With the, uh, with the comments made. And just to keep Light, lighting. Uh, so I've got lighting, reduced numbers for the um, dogs and the um, restricting the low level um, in the early and late at night and also no kenneling of dogs and a note re-signage and, and that that be then I presume deferred to the um, it would be the vice chairman to, to sign off. So with those conditions in in mind can I have a proposal for the um, officer's recommendation and a seconder? Uh, Councillor Oxley. So Councillor Brown to propose, G Brown and Councillor Mark Oxley to second. Um, all those in favour? Unanimous, Chair. Thank you.
um, the application is um, approved. Uh, can we please ask Councillor Baines to rejoin the meeting and anybody who would like to leave, I think now is a good time to. Um, And we've got 14 minutes, I think. <laughs> um, right. Um, appeals report, please. Um, uh, item six. Uh, Justin, thank you. So um, there are no new appeals received, and just two decisions that have been made. Um, 122 Welland Way in Oakham. This was a refusal, and the appeal was allowed. Um, it was quite a minor extension it was a two-story extension that was in a to the front of the property and being what we felt was squeezed in in the corner of of the property um, the appeal inspector took a different view and said no it was fine and there was plenty of space um, so that one was allowed um, it was one of those ones we, we felt it was worth, worth a, a shot um, the other one um, uh, far more significant, Millwall Farm, uh, Stockton Hall Road in Stretton. This was for a proposed permanent agricultural dwelling. Um, this one, the inspector disagreed with us in terms of, he, he felt that it didn't have a, a detrimental impact on the character of the area, um, but they did agree with our finding that, um, that it wasn't an essential need. Um, and partly that was down to the fact that um, the inspector didn't consider the existing business to be viable. And they went through um, in quite some detail the, the, the figures in terms of that. And our um, uh, consultant was able to, to put a good case forward. So that appeal has been dismissed on those, those grounds. So 50-50 this week. Any questions Thank you very much. Um, um, item seven, I have not been informed in writing of any other urgent business. So, uh, what is it? 914? 919. I will do it there. Thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you.